Hey, I'm Jenny Fish from One Big Happy Yarn Company. We want to be your yarn shop no matter where you live. Welcome back to our Etta Tea Knit Along. Etta is a top-down sweater designed by Allison Green, and we're knitting it with Barocco Summer Sesame Yarn. If you still need a kit, check out OneBigHappy.com. Today I'll show you how to do short row shaping, divide for the sleeves, test the fit, and knit the body. I can't wait, let's get started. So let's go over where we left off last time. We cast on, we knit our garter band to start our collar, then we went into our lace pattern with our increases, and now I wanna show you a little trick that we use to kind of save ourselves, It's called a lifeline. What it is is a string of thread or yarn that you run through all of your stitches to secure a point where you know from this point backwards is all the way it's supposed to be. So when you've checked, you've made sure everything's okay, best thing to do is insert this lifeline. Now for me, I'm using these interchangeable needles and there is a little hole inside of here. It's the hole that you stick the tool in to tighten your tip of your needle, but what you can also do with this little hole is slide a piece of thread through there. So I'm gonna use this needle threader and place it in the hole here on my back needle. This is the one I'm gonna be knitting with. I'm gonna slide just a little piece. You will probably want a bigger piece with a lot of extra room because once you insert this lifeline in there, you can leave it in if you want, or you can take it out after you've gone a few more rows and want to put another one in. But because this is a top-down sweater at any time, if you want to try it on to test the fit, you can leave this in there, take your needle out, and it will secure your stitches for you while you try it on. But for now, we're gonna go ahead. I know that these three repeats of the lace pattern are correct. So I'm gonna slide my thread through this needle threader. It's gonna pull it through that hole. I'm just gonna tie a loose little knot here so that I can undo it when I'm done. Now I, all I have to do is knit my next round and this will slide through all the stitches. So let me show you how that happens here. This next round is my last round of stockinette for this repeat. Now at this point I am making a smaller version of the sweater that you'll be making so you will have a lot more stitches on your needles than what I have. This is just so I can go through all the basic parts of the sweater. So I'm setting up, so the next round I'm gonna start my short row shaping. I no longer need these stitch markers, so I can go ahead and take them off as I'm knitting this last round. Again, I'm using the magic loop method. You may be using a 16 inch cord where you'll just be knitting completely in the round. That might, this might look a little different than what you have, but it's really knitter's preference and what you're comfortable with. In the pattern, when you get into your lace, it says that if your 16 inch cord is getting a little too crowded, you can switch over to the 32. It doesn't tell you specifically when because every pattern size is a little different, but whenever it's comfortable for you, you can switch the needles over to your 32 inch cord to give you a little bit more room to maneuver. So I finished that first side and I'm gonna set up for the second side of the same round. Now, my thread is tied into my needle at the join over here. So once I pull this back out, there is my thread and it's inside there with all of those stitches that I just made. Now, if you are not using interchangeable needles or you don't have a hole in it like I do here, you can tape a piece of thread to your needle. That way you can pull it through or you can simply just take a needle and thread and run it through all of your stitches. So I'm going to continue on this side. Now that I have that, I'm going to flip my work over, slide this needle into position, 
pull my back needle out, grab my lifeline. Okay, so it's in all of those stitches, safe and secure. I'm gonna give myself lots of slack, so in case at this point, if I wanted to take it off and try it to see how it fits around my neck, I can. I'll have plenty of room to adjust those stitches. Okay, so we have that lifeline in there. I can just simply leave this in here and keep on going. I can put another one in 10 rounds from now or several repeats later when I'm going, okay, you know, I know I've got all of these in, they're good. Let me secure it with a lifeline, keep going. I can pull them out later, no big deal. Now we are going to move on to short row shaping. We're gonna go over short row shaping on the back side of the sweater. It adds a little bit more fabric in the back of the sweater that allows the back of your collar to go up and then the front will sag down. And we do this because the back of our neck goes straight up and down and then the front we have our throat that is around. So in order to build this up, we do what's called short row shapings. This is the beginning of our round. It's in the back of our sweater, in the back of our neck. We're gonna come down here. Now we knit across to up here, and I've marked right up to here. Then we're gonna do a wrap and turn. We're gonna go from knitting in the round to knitting flat for just a few rows, but this will help build up that extra fabric so that our collar stands up like we want to. So we wrap the stitch, and then we purl all the way back to over here. We wrap and turn on this stitch. So we're building a crescent shape form back here to give this some more fabric. I will go and show you on a smaller version how to do that wrap and turn method. So on my sample, I'm gonna show you all the skills that you're gonna need to follow your pattern. Be sure just to follow the numbers in your pattern for your size. We're gonna begin with the knit to the wrap. So once you've knit across to where you need to put in your wrap and turn, we'll show you how to do that. Um, when you're on the knit side, you bring your yarn to the front, slide your next stitch, then you wrap and bring your, thread, your yarn to the back, and then you slide that stitch back onto the needle and now you have created this little wrap right around that stitch. Now you flip over. Now we're gonna be on the purl side. So here's where we were knitting in the round. We're just gonna switch over to knitting back and forth on the flat for just a few rows, then we'll go back to knitting in the round. All right, so now we are going to purl across until we hit our next wrap and turn. And you'll follow and along with your pattern for the number of stitches that you need to purl. Okay, to wrap a purl stitch, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our yarn in the back, slide the stitch purl-wise, bring the, th the yarn to the front, and now we're gonna slide that stitch back on so that we have now wrapped that stitch, and we're going to turn. So you'll do that back and forth according to the pattern. I'll show you one more time. I'm gonna knit to the wrapped stitch. I'm gonna pick up the wrap under here, pick up the stitch over here. I'm gonna knit these two together. And with this yarn, it's okay. Don't worry that I couldn't slide my needle all the way through. I can use my other needle to pick that wrap up and slide it over. So now I've created another stitch here. Now it says knit two and wrap and turn. So now I'm gonna bring my yarn to the front, slide that stitch over, bring it to the back. There's my wrap. Now I'm gonna slide that stitch back to this needle and turn. Now we're going to purl to the wrapped stitch. See where my stitch is wrapped right here? We are gonna purl these two together. So when you're purling a wrapped stitch, you can't exactly go in like that. The trick is you wanna bring your needle forward 
you want to pick up the wrap from the other side and then slide it onto your needle and now we want to purl these two together like this. Then we purl two more and wrap the next stitch. We're going to take the yarn to the back, slide our stitch, bring it forward, slide it back. Now we're going to turn So now I've showed you how to wrap and turn, how to knit your wraps, how to purl your wraps. Go ahead and do that two more times, and then you're going to do one more round of just knitting all of your wraps. Once you're finished with that, your short row shaping is done, and we're ready to divide for sleeves. So to divide for sleeves, you're going to go ahead and you're going to remove your beginning stitch marker. You're going to knit the amount of stitches that your pattern calls for. Then you're going to get to your sleeve portion. It's simple. All you're going to do is slide the amount of stitches required onto some scrap yarn with your tapestry needle. Slide those over. I'm going to pick up these here. Like I said, I'm working on a smaller sample, so you will be pulling off a few more stitches than what I am. Put it on your waist yarn here. Slide this out. Tie it off to hold those stitches in place. Keep them a little loose because at this point, if you want to try it on, you'll want a little bit of ease there when you're trying it on. Those are just going to hang out there for a while. We'll come back to those later. Now, we need to cast on a few stitches to connect these two pieces. And that's your sleeve will come here. So, to do a cast on in this area, we're going to do what's called a backwards loop cast on. We're going to use our working yarn so that we don't have to do any fancy footwork here. What we're going to do, wrap it around our thumb, go under. Let me show you that again. Wrap it around our thumb, go under. Now in the middle of these stitches, we're going to place our stitch marker to mark our new beginning of round. Then we'll do a backwards loop cast on. And then from here, we pick up and knit the other side. And you do the same exact thing for the other sleeve. So now I've knit up to the second sleeve. I'm going to go ahead and slide those stitches onto some waist yarn. Now this one is no longer the beginning of the round, so I don't have to worry about putting that stitch marker in the middle. I can just go ahead and slide these off of here like this. Hold that there. Now I'm going to do my backwards loop cast on and cast on my new stitches. I want to make sure that I leave these stitches loose because this has no foundation stitch to the bottom of this cast on. So we just kind of want to keep them loose, get all those stitches on there. So you've done a backwards loop cast on and you've got all of these stitches on here. This is going to be where your armpit is in your sweater. So we're going to go ahead and continue knitting a couple more rounds to get a little bit more structure on our needles and then we can test it to fit. So now we've divided for our sleeves. We've knitted a few rounds. We are ready to try it on and check for the fit. I have my little buddy here that's going to help us test out this sweater. I am using the magic loop method so I have these long cords on here. I don't need to take it off my needles at this point, but if you need some extra room to slip it over, 
your body to test it, you might want to run another lifeline around, leave it a little longer, take your needles out, and then you have a secured work that you can try on. And at this point, as you try it on, you can adjust to fit if there's anything that you need to tweak on the pattern, if it doesn't feel right, if maybe you need a little bit more here or there. And if you need help with making any of those adjustments, go ahead and leave a comment below and we'll get back to you. So I'm gonna slide his little arm through here. Look at this! He just makes me happy. And my little bear has the beginning of a sweater. So continue knitting, follow the instructions for the body shaping. You'll have increases and decreases. If you need help keeping track of your rows, go ahead and use your little row counter. Once you get past the shaping rounds, it should be smooth sailing with relaxing stockinette. But if you get stuck, just leave a comment. We're all here to help. Remember, you can get a kit and all the supplies you need at OneBigHappy.com. Next week, we'll bind off, finish the sleeves, and block this tee so it's ready to wear. Be sure to hit the subscribe button below and click the bell to be notified every time we have a new video. I'll see you there. Happy knitting.